this morning. Hey, I don't know what you're going through this week. Don't know what you've been through this month. I don't know, maybe you're here for the first time and you're looking for a place to call home. Can I tell you something? There's a place for you. There's a place for you in the Father's house. He has a place. Listen, your past won't define you. Your past won't validate you. Your mistakes, your errors in judgment, your attitude won't define you. But I can tell you that the blood of Jesus that was shed at Calvary can define you today. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Amen. Somebody needs to give him glory this morning. If you've accepted Christ as your Savior today, woo, we should get excited about the kingdom of heaven, excited about the glory of God. When I come into this place, there's not a doubt in my mind that there's a place for me here. But if you're here this morning and you've been broken, you've been forsaken, you've been cut off, you've been cut free, and you feel like you don't have a place, I want to tell you, listen to me, I want to tell you, you put your big boy pants on this morning, ladies, no offense, you put your big girl pants on this morning, and while we're singing this song again, you make your way up here, make your way right here, stake your claim in the kingdom of heaven this morning, and tell the devil that he's a liar, tell the devil he has no control over your life, tell the I don't know about you. I don't know where God's taking this thing. But if you're in the balcony, you need to start making your way this way. Stake your claim in the kingdom of heaven. Tell the devil you're not settling for second best. Tell him you're no longer bound to shame and regret. Guilt cannot, come on now. Guilt cannot hold you. Hallelujah. Sin cannot keep you. Listen, you've been delivered. He said, I took the keys to the kingdom of hell to the grave amen and of death there's nothing in here this morning come on. i don't know about you when they start singing this if you need to stake your claim this morning i don't know what you're going through maybe you've been sick maybe somebody left you listen to me that person that left you cannot define they didn't have a hold of your destiny anyway god has a hold of your destiny and you have an option this morning to stake your claim and when you come up here, if it looks like there's more, you come to the next step. And if there's no more, you come to the next step. God is going to use this song this morning to free somebody. He's going to use this song to free somebody. While they're singing, you head this way. I'm not going to listen. I'm not going to embarrass you. You're just taking the stand today. Saying, devil, no longer is that going to hold me. Shame can't keep me. Guilt can't keep me. My mistakes and my errors in judgment have not and will not define me. Amen. Head this way. Somebody listen. This is your freedom moment. Y'all go ahead and sing. This is your freedom moment. You get up here. Come on. I want you to come right here. I'm not even going to touch you. Amen. Come on. Come on. They're coming. I'm not, listen, I'm not. I don't know. Do you see it? Come on. Listen. God has a place for you here. God has a place for you here. He has a place for you in the kingdom of heaven. There's not too many of you. We'll fill the stage. I don't care. Come on, sing that, sing that. Come on, break that chain. Somebody, you need. When you come out of your seat, somebody's getting free this morning. Come on. Yes, I am. Are you? Yes, I am. Come on. Come on. There's a place. There's a place for you. Your name may not be written in the roles that life changers Christian said. But if your name is written in the kingdom of heaven, your name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. God wants you to take your place in the kingdom of heaven this morning. Come on, somebody else. Somebody else. They're not finished. Amen. Thank you. Come on. Somebody else. Yes. Yes. Sing that. Come on. Who did I for? He died for me. Yeah. 
whatever you're going through, you just now invited him right into the middle of it. If you have a spouse that's up here and you're not up here, if your husband or your wife's up here and you're not up here, get up here. Get up here. You and her or you and him need to declare something today over your children, over your grandchildren. Leave a legacy for them to stand on that all hell may break loose, but my God is still able. Find your honey right now because we're going to speak something over your children. We're going to speak something over those, listen to me, that are bound by addiction, that are bound by depression, that are bound by anxiety or that are just downright mean rascals. Amen. We're going to declare that the devil has no hold on them from this day forward, from this moment forward. Amen. Listen to me. Is Dennis playing? Dennis playing. Where's Dennis? He, he may be hiding somewhere. Dennis, you need to be over here with me. Listen to me. We have parents in here this morning that yesterday they put their child on a plane to Florida praying that God will deliver them in a rehab center of drugs and the addiction and the lies that the enemy had been telling them that they need this substance for them to be happy and for them to keep going. Listen to me. What happens right there, it all happens in the spirit. You and I can't drag him away from it. You and I can't make him leave it alone. But when we touch heaven right here in a second, woo, I believe God's going to lose something in Florida. I believe God's going to lose something. Listen, they may not even be in their marriage bed this morning. Listen to me. Your child, your, your family may not even be in their own marriage bed this morning. Oh, hallelujah. But God is going to free something. Hey, I'm, oh, God is going to do something this morning that is going to change your family. Thanksgiving will never be the same. Christmas this year is not going to be the same. Hallelujah. We have got to stand. It's not okay to accept status quo. It's not okay to say they're addicted or they're bound or they're sick or they're depressed or they're overwhelmed and declare it to be okay. We serve the King of glory who holds all power in heaven and all power in earth and power over hell this morning. Hallelujah. Woo! I don't know about you, but if you have a family member, listen, I, if it's you, I don't, I'm not going to embarrass anybody. Listen, you guys get loose all your own. <laughs> I have a friend that right about now, he's probably thinking they're about to get silly up in there. But if you'll give that to God this morning, let me tell you something. When you sing that, when the sun sets free is free indeed, listen to me, you've never walked that out. you walk walked that out. You've never experienced that phrase until you walk that out. And this is your moment. I'm telling you, the waters are troubled this morning. And when the waters are troubled, you've got to get in. You've got to make up your mind in that moment, in that time frame, in that move of God, that you're never going to be the same again. I declare addiction to be free over your children this morning. And we're going to pray in a minute, but listen to me. Claim that with me. I declare today that anything that the enemy has held bound, listen, anything that the enemy has tried to hold back from me, God is going to open up a blessing for you. That job that you didn't earn, that job that you don't have an education for, get ready for it. Listen to me, that, that, that deliverance that you needed over that thing that's held you bound, I don't care if it's a cigarette, I don't care if it's alcohol, I don't care if you're the biggest gossip in town, I don't care if you're the town crier, I don't care if you have a spirit of unforgiveness, a spirit of jealousy this morning, God is in the house to break every yoke a bondage in this place. Hallelujah. Let's do that. Whatever you're declaring today, I'm disagreeing with you. I'm disagreeing. I'm, whatever you're declaring, you declare it. I can't declare it for you. You declare it. I want my children saved. I want my grandchildren saved. I want my family back. I want my marriage back. I want my... You get me? Let's do that while I pray this morning. I'm going to pray out loud. You pray out loud if you want to, but we're going to touch heaven today. And if you get in your mind today while we're touching heaven, then we're kicking in the gates of hell. Hallelujah. Listen, I believe whatever it takes, whatever it takes, if you're, you make, oh, hallelujah, you make up your mind that if your family member goes to hell, if your family member does spend eternity in hell, they're going to see you with your arms wrapped around their legs and saying, I'm not giving you up. If you choose to go, you go. But today, I'm calling them back from the north, from the south, from the east, hallelujah, say west, let go, hallelujah, let's pray and declare the kingdom of heaven, God we thank you today, 
And God, I speak against every addiction today in the name of Jesus. I speak against every lifestyle that's contrary to the Word of God this morning. I'm calling children back to the kingdom of heaven. I'm calling husbands back to the kingdom of heaven. I'm calling wives back to the kingdom of glory. Satan, you have no control in here. And we lose the work of the Holy Spirit in these families, in these marriages, in our finances, in our jobs. And God, today, we declare that we have a place and we're staking our claim. We're staking our faith. We're staking our promise on your promise that who is free by the Son of God is free indeed. Now somebody give him a hand clap of praise. We're going to sing that again and see what God wants to do in here. Let's sing that. Woo! Hallelujah. Give him glory. Who are you? You're a value in the kingdom of heaven. a woo-hoo moment. Amen. Listen, God has set some people free, but I believe God also has a word this morning. Pastor West, if you'll head this direction, I believe God still has a word for you in the next 20 minutes, 15 minutes, 18 minutes, 11 minutes. This should be really, he's just looking for a clock. 
This should be a moment. Listen, homecoming is, yeah, we talk about dinner. Uh, Pastor Appreciation Day, absolutely, we talk about that. But homecoming should be this, that you come home to a place that you know, that you know, that you know, down deep in your knower, that God didn't leave you. He hadn't forsaken you. He didn't forget you. But he has a place for you. And then the kingdom of heaven, this is my friend Wes, Pastor Wes. He's a pastor at Natural Bridge Community, uh, Community Fellowship, Christian Fellowship, Christian Fellowship. If I was a whole lot older than him, I would tell him that he is the, that he is the, a chip off the old block, but he's, you know, he's too old to be off of this block. Hallelujah. But I do want to, I do want to just introduce this as Wes. His family's down here on the corner. If you give him a hand as he brings a word today. <laughs> Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord this morning? I have asked them to sing this uh, chorus one more time with us because I, I, I just uh, it would make me feel just right at home. I'm going to testify for just a moment before we do that. And, and uh, for me, it's a, it's a great privilege for me to even, even be considered to stand on this stage and to share what the Lord has put in my heart. But you see, I've not always been a Christian. I've not always had my life put together. And sometimes my life is still a mess. But there was a once, a, once at a time in my life that I was a, a considered a complete failure. Nobody uh, really expected me to amount to a whole lot. Matter of fact, I graduated graduated high school with the, without the ability to read. I was unable uh, to really do anything. My mind didn't operate just so right. Uh, they told me in school that the best thing I could do is get a job digging a ditch, and that's what I would be, a ditch digger. And, and, and well, I'll just be honest with you, as, a, as I started out, that's what I did. But I also turned to alcohol, and, and I become a, an alcoholic, if you know what I'm saying, and, and my life was a wreck, a complete wreck. But also, uh, there was some people that were praying for me. There were some people that knew how to get a hold of the Lord. I was one of them children that a mama kept crying out for. I was a child that they said, hey, there's got to be a better life. And I won't tell you all of my story, but I want you to know today that God, He is awesome. And yes, I am who He says that I am. I'm not defined by my school teachers. I'm not, dis- I'm not defined by the friends that I said I would always be a drunk I would always be an alcoholic but I am divine by the blood of Jesus that's been applied to my life I am a child of the most high God hallelujah glory be to his name so let's sing it one more time from our heart and forget about what everybody has said about you you're a child of the most high God be seated if you would like. I'm going to be quick this morning. I want to share a passage of scripture to you from Hebrews chapter 11. 
verse 1 and 2 to start with, and we'll jump real quickly into 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter 6, 15 through 18. If we could title the message this morning, it's uh, simply blindsided. Have you been blindsided? Uh, just a little quick illustration to, to, to get us going real fast. Uh, uh, I was helping, uh, actually was in the yard playing as a child, and, and uh, there was some cows coming by. My grandfather didn't like them in the, in the uh, yard, so I was doing my due diligence to keep them out. I made a quick turn to my left, and there was a telephone pole right here. I was blindsided you're in walmart you're coming you're in a hurry you're looking at the things you want and here comes uh, somebody around the t- corner and you did not see them all of a sudden you are blindsided and this is what happens in our life we find ourselves being blindsided by situations and circumstances of life and i want you to know in hebrew chapter 11 verses 1 and 2 it says this now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not see seen for by it the elders obtained a good report so real quick this is the thing what we see is what we're in faith is not the subject of what we see are you with me you may be facing the greatest challenges of your life you may have been derailed you may have been blindsided and you can't see no further than that i'm here to tell you today that if you put your faith in jesus christ and begin to look past your problem look past what has knocked you off your feet and know that god has a plan and his plan is perfect and guess what he is for you and he's not against you can somebody give him a hand clap of praise 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 15 through 18. It says this, And when a servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And a servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? So he answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them or against us. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened his eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, a mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire around Elisha. So when uh, the Syrians came down uh, to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, Strike these people, uh, I pray, with blindness. And he struck them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Now I want you to just for a moment uh, put yourself in the servant's shoes. Uh, He walks outside, uh, he looks around. And he comes back in and he says, hey, master, we have a problem. I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but we have a problem. I just walked outside. I seen what was going on. And guess what? We're completely surrounded. Now today, I think there may be some in this house that may feel like that servant. You feel like you're completely surrounded. You feel like that life is closing in on you from every possible angle. Your job is giving you a headache. Hey, listen, there's people people at your workplace uh, that you don't even want to speak to uh, because hey uh, they bring out the devil in you uh, every time you look at them that's a good place to say hey man right it's closing in everything going on in your life your kids uh, running here and there uh, and you don't even know what uh, you don't even know who you are anymore blindsided blindsided this servant was blindsided he came back in and he says hey guys we got a major problem here and he says i love i love what he says what are we going to do have you looked at your husband and said what are we going to do have you looked at your wife and said what are we going to do listen i want you to know that your answer doesn't come in your wife and your answer does not come in your husband but when the husband and the wife begin to seek god and what he has for your life there's where the answer comes what shall we do have you been blindsided (laughs) oh my I want to go to Jehoshaphat but I'm not going All right. listen Elisha was very calm how calm are you today how calm are you Uh, I seen up. I'm not real calm. 
Matter of fact, preacher, I want to go outside. I want to slice their tires and beat their windows in. <laughs> Hallelujah. While I'm singing Amazing Grace. <laughs> That's how we are sometimes when we're blindsided. It's not how many times we fall, but, but it's knowing that when we fall, the right hand of the Lord is the one that upholds us with his right hand of holiness. Oh, come on. When I fall, though I get back up again. Oh, my. He said, don't be afraid. He's calm. Just chilled out. He says, don't be afraid. And here we are, a wreck. We have came here. Some of you didn't even want to be here, but it's pastor appreciation. And you said, dear God, if I don't show up today, it's bad. <laughs> so what do we do? We get up, we make ourselves get out of the bed. We put ourselves together and we come to church. We put a smile on our face, but we've been blindsided. He said, don't be afraid. What's that mean? 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says this. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, a spirit of being timid. But he says, but of power and of love and a sound mind. And when we come into this place, and we may be blindsided, but hey, if we know that we walk under the power of the anointing of the Holy Ghost of God, oh, come on, and we know that He is for us and not against us, and we begin to have a little bit of praise in the middle of our mess, oh, come on, and we begin to glorify God because He needs to be glorified, and our fear is turned to power, our mind mind is fixed on the Lord our mind is on him that he is able oh come on a sound mind a sound mind not a sounding mind what's the difference a sound mind is fixed a sounding mind has voices Amen. <laughs> what kind of voices? You're going to get it now. <laughs> You've really messed up. Oh, go ahead and cut their tires. <laughs> they got plenty of money. They'll buy new ones. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Somebody must have thought about cutting somebody's tires. <laughs> I rebuke that spirit in Jesus' name. A sound mind knowing who we are dependent upon. Even though I've been blindsided. Even though there's addictions. Even though there's bills. Even though there's oppression. Even though there's anxiety. Even though my best friend has turned their back on me. I have a sound mind to know that Jesus Christ is my present help in a time of trouble. He's the one that delivers me. He's the one that sets the captive the free and in him I will put my trust blindsided Elisha again just calm well boy there's more for us than against us are you crazy there's more for us than against us. And some of you are sitting here thinking, Oh Lord, preacher, you don't know what the circumstances of my life are. Right? I'm telling you, if God be for us, who could ever be against us? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in this world. Oh, come on. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. I will be the head and not the tail. Are you with me? blindsided but not shaken oh come on knowing in whom we have believed Elijah prays he says I want you to open his eyes I want him to see something more than his current situation look over at your neighbor and say there's more to it look over at your other neighbor and say there's more to it 
Somebody said, I ain't doing nothing, you ass preacher. That's okay. Listen. There's more to it. All we can see, all that the, 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 the servant could see uh, was the problem. And our eyes are focused uh, on the problem. Uh, but when we begin to take our eyes off the problem uh, and put our eyes on the answer, now Elisha's eyes uh, was on the answer uh, and not the problem. Uh, and he knew that if God took him to it, uh, that God would take him through it. Uh, oh, come on. Uh, that God would provide uh, all of his needs uh, according to the riches uh, and go. He knew that he was his strong tower. He knew he was his defender. He knew that he was that present help in a time of trouble. So he was calm because his eyes was fixed on God. He says, I want my, my, I want my servant to see more than his present situation. And the Bible says that he prayed and said, open up his eyes. And all of a sudden, his eyes was open and he looked into the hills and they were full of chariots of fire. I know. Preacher. Chariots of fire. I mean, come on. My boss is difficult. And you're talking about chariots of fire. Do you realize what my husband said to me last night? And you're talking about a chariot of fire. My child just walked in the door, turned his plate of food over in the floor, and run his fist through the wall, and you're talking about a chariot of fire. Well, bless the Lord and the chariot of fire, but today I've got to patch a hole in the wall. Today I have to clean up the mess. Today my boss is still mad. Today my husband is still angry. And, and what does this help me? Huh. Well, I'm happy to report to you today that there is something good in it. And when the Lord lets his hand be upon your life and you don't focus on your problem, but you begin to focus on him and you think there may be no way out, God is creating a masterpiece in your life. I seen the eyes. What masterpiece? You're crazy. Listen. I'm hurrying. I'm hurrying. Almost done. Almost done. Second Corinthians 4, 7 and 9 it says this. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. What's an earthen vessel? Come on. It's us. That the excellency may be of God and not of us. That, that the throne beyond others may be of God and not of us. And guess what? He's saying what? That, that his power may be of God and not We are hard pressed. We, it feels like the world is coming in on every side. But yet we're not crushed. I'm not moved. Things in this life may be coming against me. But my mind is fixed on the Lord. My mind is on him. I'm going to keep him the priority and not all the stuff says this we're perplexed it seems like we have no way out as the servant said hey what are we going to do but listen we may be perplexed and i have a way out but yet we're not in despair the word despair means utterly at a loss he said you're persecuted but you're not forsaken that means things just come against you but you're not at a loss he's still with you Oh, come on. We may have took a lick, but we're not destroyed. I love that because when I was blindsided, that telephone pole, it didn't move an inch. It never even budged, but the side of my head sure did. In the natural, it hurt. You say, well, that happened when you was a kid. Yeah, I know, and here I am preaching about it all these years later. It made a mark on my life. I want you to know that some of the stuff you're in right now, it may make a mark on your life, but listen, what God is doing through it, you may be hard-pressed, but you still got a way out. You may be, what? I may feel like I'm forsaken, but I'm not. I'm not. Y'all care if I read some scriptures really fast to you? Really fast. 
Are you okay, Pastor? No, nah, you just give me the signal, man. We're, we're on your command, brother. Isaiah, listen. We just probably came through one of the hardest times of our life. I was going to say this for altar service, but I'm going to share it now, and then I'm going to read, and then, then we'll close. Kim and I probably came through one of the hardest times of our life, and it's not, it wasn't Kim's fault. It's my fault. You say, oh boy, he's preaching to us, and it's his fault. They went through a hard part. Listen. God called me to preach about 16 years ago. I was running a, a, a machinery uh, at, a, at a bolt factory. And as I was running it, I hated my job. Anybody ever hate your job before? Can I get a witness? I mean, I got up on Monday morning. I was like, oh, Lord, this is not good. I hated it. I hated working there. I worked with some good guys, but I didn't like it. And then one day I was standing at the machine and I was, I was standing there and I was running. I got so good at it, man, I didn't even have to look at it anymore. I was over here looking somewhere else running this machine and the guy comes by and he's like, what's wrong with you anyway? You don't even look at the machine anymore. I'm like, I'm bored, man. It's the, it's, I hate it. The Lord spoke into my heart. He said, preach. Completely blindsided me. For a year and a half of my life I ran. Now listen, at the end of this, I accepted a call to preach, and here I am today. However, through the hardships of life, I, I made this comment a few times. I, I was in the car, and actually my truck, and I was riding to West Virginia to work, driving two hours one way, and I, I, I made this scream in the, in the middle of my truck, just me and the Lord. I said, do you know what it's like to be forsaken? Whose child is that? <laughs> I'm sure there'll be no hands go up right there. <laughs> Hallelujah! They answered right. Listen, when I was, I was having myself a pity party, I couldn't see past the current situation I was in. And then the Lord says, yes, I know what it's like to be forsaken. I'm the one that took your stripes. I'm the one that took... I know what it's like for the Father to turn His back on the sin and shame that hung on my body. Oh, come on, church! You talk about an attitude adjustment. <laughs> That's what I needed. Time went on. He calls me out of a business back to pursue ministry and all the struggles and strains that goes with it and went through an area of depression in my life to where I thought, man, maybe I even missed the call of God to even preach. I don't even know if I can even do it anymore. And then I began to seek the Lord. And my wife, who stuck with me through thick and thin, she seen me as a drunk and she seen me sober. She sees me when I couldn't read, and she sees me when I can. Oh, come on. She could have bailed on me years ago. She come to me. She said, I had a dream. You was driving a Jeep. I had a dream. You was driving a Jeep. You wrecked the Jeep. You landed in the top in the mud, and it was consuming you. And you had climbed out of the Jeep, and you come up onto a little island. And as you climbed up on the island, there was a snake that gathered around you, and it began to coil around you, and it began to choke the life out of you. And she said, in the moment that I thought that your life was done and that you were dead, you grabbed the hold of the snake by the head and began to pull it off, and you killed the snake. And she began to look into my life, and she began to speak prophetically into my life. And she says, hey, you're not going to die but you're going to live. Oh, come on. I couldn't see past my situation, but she began to speak it over me and begin to declare the Word of God back into my life. Oh, come on. I'm going to try to do it real fast. 
Isaiah 43 and 2 says this, When thou passest through the waters, I'll be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Uh, John 16, 33, These things I have spoken to you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Proverbs 18 and 10 says this, The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and is safe. Isaiah 54 and 17, No weapon formed against you shall prosper every tongue that rise against thee in judgment shall be condemned this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their righteousness is of me saith the Lord First Peter 5 and 7 cast all your care on me or he cares for you John 1 John 4 and 4 ye are, ye are of God little children and have overcome them because a greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world to day we declare that you see more than just being blindsided that you see the plan of God and what you're going through I feel this turn over give your neighbor a high five and say I'm going to make it high five your other neighbor and say I'm going to make it Oh, come on. Can we do it just one time and get a little crazy with it? I'm okay with a little crazy. After being here with Pastor Todd just a little while, I think he is too. Okay, so it's all right. I love it. I feel right at home. I want you to slap somebody's hand and say, hey, I'm going to make it. And when you do that, you're saying to the present situation, you don't have a hold on me. I see that God has a plan and it's going to be prosperous. Hey, he's got plans to prosper me and not destroy me. My God is for me. He's not against me. Well, we're done. Let's stand. How many know life stinks? <laughs>